Well hello and welcome to the first of our videos for Unit 3 Chemistry um, where we're going to start looking at fuels. So looking at fuels in this lesson we're going to be looking at what the de definition of a fuel is, the difference between energy and a fuel, what the three issues facing society with reference to fuels are, the technology that we have to solve these problems or what's being developed and the main fuels that we use in Australia and Victoria. We'll look at some of these fuels in more detail. It is important to make sure that you take reference to these definitions and be able to explain these in your own words but making sure you use that correct technical vocabulary. These kinds of things are tending to come up more and more in your VCAR long response questions towards the end um, where they're asking you to be able to explain your understanding of the context of the chemistry we've been studying. So when we look at types of fuels we are breaking our fuels down into fossil fuels or biofuels. Fossil fuels cover those fuels that are coal, crude oil, natural gas, coal seam gas and petrodiesel. So these are all of the things that we tend to extract okay, from the earth and um, are from large reserves of old materials which we'll look at in more detail. Then biofuels you will notice very conveniently have the term biogas, bioethanol and biodiesel. These are made from more easily replenishable biological um, materials and we will also look at those in more detail as we move on. But you do need to be able to classify the fuels that you're talking about as either fossil fuels or biofuels. When we talk about fuels versus energy, the definition that we're using for a fuel is that it is a substance that stores energy that can be released relatively easily for use as heat or power. So we are talking about energy transformations. Okay, remembering that energy cannot be created or destroyed we can just transform it from one to the other. And we're starting with chemical potential energy being locked away inside these substances and that the release of that chemical potential energy is given over to heat or other forms. Okay, so heat or it may be even electricity. Okay, that we are releasing. So we're releasing the energy stored within these molecules in order to produce heat or electricity for use in our day-to-day -day lives. Okay, the use of fuels obviously has been rapidly advancing technology, particularly since the Industrial Re Revolution or the early 19th century really, um, as our demands for things like electricity and transportation have increased throughout our society. The energy output from fuel can be measured in joules, which is our SI unit, and you may remember that this links to our Q equals MC delta T, where C is 4.18 joules per gram per degree C. Okay, so this, when we use this, we get energy in joules, but generally because we're dealing with very large amounts or um, when we're talking about society's uses, we need to report it in differing values. And this can depend on the amount of energy. So we may use kilojoules, which we often see for delta H values, megajoules, gigajoules and terajoules. These are what we're talking about when we're talking about large scale energy production. So you may see these used for questions that are asking about power plants or electricity demands of a city or things like that. That being said, it is essential for us to be able to easily move from one unit to another. Okay, and in our VCAR data booklet, you are given a list of metric conversions for um, you to be able to use throughout your exam. So you'll have them there. But moving forward, we do need to remember we are looking at 
making sure we're using the correct number of significant figures in year 12 and to be able to convert. So if we have a look at this, we're asked to convert each energy so that the final answer is in three significant figures. Remembering that zeros before the first integer don't count. Okay, um, they're not significant. So in this case, these ones would not be significant, but zeros after the decimal place are significant. So in this case, these ones aren't significant but these ones are. So let's have a look. If we wanted to convert uh, 56,782, we want three significant figures. So we're going to be cutting off here. So I'm going to make that 5.67 to get into scientific notation. This eight is going to make it go up though. So I'm going to round that up to 5.68. And then we're going to multiply that this is much larger, so we're moving our decimal place one, two, three, four. So it's going to be times 10 to the four as we move it one, two, three, four positions. So this would give us 5.68 times 10 to the four joules in this case. And this would be written using correct form with the correct number of significant figures. So I want you to pause the video here convert each of these values and then come back and check your answer. Okay, so here we are. This is each of our values converted to three significant figures. With B, it is smaller than zero, so we've used a negative two power because we're moving, uh, we need to make it smaller. Okay, with C, we have 10 to the eight, remembering that we still need to count these two. And then with D, the scientific notation was already completed for us but we did need to round to be able to have the three significant figures so 5.01 times 10 to the 6 joules if you're uncertain with this um, it is something that we need to practice in identifying the correct number of significant figures and being able to convert between units so when we talk about fuels and how useful they are, it's going to depend on its application. The energy value of the fuel in what we consider kilojoules per gram, okay, which we will come to define as the heat of combustion. So how much energy do we get per gram of fuel that we burn or per mole of fuel that we burn? The availability of the fuel, how easy is it to source? The how the fuel can be stored. Can it be stored safely for use later? Does it need to be collected as it's used? The overall cost of the fuel, and more importantly, as we're moving forward, the toxicity of the fuel. So whether it's poisonous or if it causes pollution, such as acid rain or um, smog, those kinds of things. And how easy it is, does it require more processing or things like that. So all of these things come together to define how useful the fuel will be. And when we look at things like oil and things like that, they've met these criteria typically, but some of them are changing as we move forward into the future. That the idea of the availability of the fuel and the cost of the fuel are things that are rapidly changing in our modern society. In Australia, the majority of our energy is used for heating and cooling. Okay, again, even water heating, if you think we use a lot of refrigeration um, in order to keep food um, at a safe level, we use it for air conditioning or heating and things like that. So that is the primary source of use of energy in Australia. We have large energy stocks. Australia has significant uranium. Even though we do not have nuclear power in Australia ourselves, we don't use nuclear power stations. There's only one nuclear reactor in Australia, which is in Canberra, which is used for producing medical isotopes and research. The majority of our fuel sources are centered in coal, black coal and brown coal. Brown coal in particular in Victoria is our major source of fuel stocks with some petroleum reserves. So we can classify fuels 
as fossil fuels versus renewables. And you will have heard these terms used a lot in the scientific debates around climate change. These can be classified as either sustainable or non-sustainable. And these are definitions that you must be able to understand. Questions in your exams focus heavily on whether are you explaining whether or not something is sustainable when comparing two fuels. So for a non-sustainable fuel, these are used at a rate faster than they can be replaced. Things like fossil fuels, which include oil, natural gas, and coal. And then we put possibly uranium here. The energy density on uranium is so high that um, it's expected that we could use it for power without it running out. So that one's sort of like, while it is a limited resource, the energy it contains is very high and also through the process of nuclear fission and decay, it, it just ends up being a little bit one of those exceptions in chemistry. Sustainable resources, on the other hand, are not expected to be depleted within the lifetime of the human race. And this is where um, that uranium sort of straddles both. And um, they can they don't cause long term damage to the environment. So we look at these as being wind power, water, tidal, the use of biomass for um, forming energy. So this is dead plants and things like that that are recently um, dead. And then of course the sun for solar because we if the sun's gone then we're gone. So this fits within the not running out between the light in the lifetime of the human race. Biochemical fuels, which are fuels that are obtained from living systems, so this would be our bioethanol, biogas, those kinds of things, are renewable in that they are easily replenished in, at the rate of which they are used, but they're not necessarily sustainable, and this is something that we'll look at in more detail later on. So we're going to leave this here, um, and this will be your first attempt at writing notes. Okay, so I want you to think about the things that we've talked about in this video. Write a summary of those, remembering that the questions that we had to be able to answer at the beginning of this was the definition of a fuel, the difference between energy and a fuel, the issues facing our societies with reference to fuels, which is something you should be able to answer from your common knowledge, what technologies we currently have to solve some of these problems, which is something I would like you to think about, and the main fuels that we use in Australia and Victoria and why. So finish up your summary notes and then we will get moving on to our comparisons between fossil fuels and biofuels. And I'll see you in class.